Hello friends, welcome back to Endo Tales from Life. In this video, we are going to talk about the recent updates in irrigant activation devices in clinical endodontic practice. One of the most viewed videos in our channel is the video on comparing different irrigant activation devices that we did three years back. And recently people have been asking me about newer updates and also about how to choose one for your practice. That's why we are doing this video. And in this video, what we are going to do is we are just going to scientifically classify all the irrigant activation devices in the market so that it, you'll be able to choose one and we'll be giving you uh, examples uh, that is the brand names or each of these types so which will make it easier for you. Nevertheless, it is very important to have an irrigant activation device in your practice. I would say it is as important or more important than your endomotor because it's this irrigant activation device that is going to push the irrigant into the lateral canals, the microanatomy, uh, even the dentinal tubule for achieving maximum root canal disinfection, which is the main goal in endodontic treatment. So basically, all these uh, activators will fall into one among these three categories. So what are they? They are either sonics, ultrasonics, and the newer ones, which are yasonics. So basically what is sonics and ultrasonics or yasonics, you can see the frequency range. So I will give you a very simple animated example for you to understand what is sonic, what is ultrasonic and what exactly is the difference between frequency and amplitude. So let us say uh, this pendulum is moving around or swinging and if I have to describe this, I'll have to tell with two terms one is the frequency and the other one is the amplitude the frequency is the number of time number of times this pendulum is swinging left and right in a minute and the amplitude is the maximum distance to which this pendulum is swinging so when i'm talking about the, my irrigant activation devices that is sonics or ultrasonics we need to also understand the frequency and the amplitude of this irrigant activation tip. This is more important for you to understand which one is much better. So if you look at sonics, they are basically just two to three kilohertz. So their frequency is less, but the amplitude is very high. So when you see a sonic device in action, you can literally see the tip moving forward, moving up and down. So this type of sonic activation, these devices basically depend on hydrodynamics or pushing the irrigant more laterally into the accessory canals than the microbubble explosion or the acoustic steaming, etc. That is the phenomenon that you see it ultrasonics. So I'll just show you a small video clipping. You can appreciate the increased amplitude of movement with sonics. So you can literally see them moving up and down but that's not the case with ultrasonics though they are very high in frequency that is about 20 kilohertz you cannot see them move that's because their amplitude is very less so all of you must be familiar with this you will know that the ultrasonics in, is in action only when you touch the metallic surface so though ultrasonics are theoretically more powerful than the sonics, the lateral displacement of the irrigant is not as much as you see with the sonic devices. So what happens is these ultrasonic devices, the moment they contact root dentin, their ultrasonic energy is dampened. So basically how effective these ultrasonic tips are beyond curvature or in very narrow canal remains a question mark. That's one of the limitations. Though ultrasonics can be more powerful in dislodging smear layer or can cause more uh, microbial killing with the acoustic streaming and microbubble explosion, all these activities can be dampened if they are going to come in contact with root dentin. Then came the newer classification or the newer type which is just a modified ER scalar. So these ER sonics are basically somewhere in between the sonics and the ultrasonic. The frequency is in between them and the amplitude is also in between them. And that's why 
recent studies are showing more promising results for this ER Sonics. You can see this. You can see they had both have a good amplitude and also frequency. So what are the examples or the brand names for sonic devices? The endo activator from Densply is a classic example of a sonic device and all those copied versions of the endo activators like these uh, you can even uh, google them and get them on online websites or companies like unique have this. So uh, this these are the examples of sonic activation devices. So if you have these devices what studies recommend is to use them for a much longer time than ultrasonics or sonics. So say if you're going to just use your, so your ultrasonics or yasonics for 3 to 5 seconds for activation, this may require up to 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, so extra time because the frequency or the power of these activation devices is slightly lesser. Then comes the ultrasonics. So ultrasonics I gave you, I, I showed you what they are. They have very high frequency. So the brand names, uh, one of the most popular ones is the Eerie Safe tip from Satellite. And then we also had devices like this. One example is Ultra X. So all these devices had metallic tips and we know that we may have some problems in placing metallic tips in say the root canals. So among all the other stiffer tips, the Eerie Safe tip from Satellite and the Ultra X uh, in one of our last videos, I would have told you that it's not a good idea to buy the Ultra X device because their tips are very stiff. But the company has now modified them. They have come up with tips that are more soft and flexible, but still they are metallic tips. So, but since it is made of titanium, they may not ledge, they may not you know, break easily, but they are still metallic tips. Then we have the Yasonics, uh, the example, classic example is Eddy from VDW and in India we have Pats or the Pro Agitator. So basically these are modified Yas scalers and they have the polymer tips uh, which is the best part about Sonics like Endo Activator and also the Yasonics. So we can see the Yasonics in action since they have the frequency and amplitude in between Sonics and Ultrasonics. They seem to be more effective for both lateral displacement of the irrigant and also acoustic streaming and this microbubble explosion to happen. That's the cavitation. So how do we choose an activator for your clinical practice? There are no hard and fast rules. You can choose uh, any whichever activator that you feel is more apt for your clinical situation. but. Ultimately, these activators are so important because you can see these classic examples where we had lateral canals which, which in turn had a lateral lesion and I did not scout these canals with files and all of these spaces were cleaned with the irrigants that were used along with activators followed by the bioceramic sealant that has flown into these ramifications. So I'll just show you the workflow that I follow personally because we know that ultrasonics are very powerful, more efficient, but their actions are restricted beyond curvatures. So what I personally do is we use ultrasonics in a continuous mode for debridement of the canal basically, debridement of the pulp chamber and the coronal third, following which I'll, do, I'll be doing passive syringe irrigation followed by uh, yarsonics or you can also use any of the sonic methods. So uh, you can have U-files or Erisafe any metallic tip, see immediately after the first rotary instrument or my orifice shaper, you can see the lot of debris and pulp tissue there. It's so difficult to use a syringe or passive syringe irrigation now and passive activation which is too demanding for uh, removing all this debris. So what we do is, I'll be using this continuous ultrasonic irrigation initially after my preparation to debride the canal, to remove the gross debris, you can see the 
eddy currents flowing through the irrigant and since it's continuous ultrasonic irrigant we are also having continuous replacement of the irrigant so this is very good to clean the canal till the middle third and once the canal is now free of debris now we do passive irrigation followed by activation with sonics another example where I'm using continuous ultrasonic irrigation in the coronal third before using the syringe irrigation so this is my personal workflow what I do is I just use the normal scalers first to clean the pulp chamber following which we'll be using continuous ultrasonic irrigation to debride the coronal third you can see that I'm not forcing them beyond the curve just trying to be passive but still this is a metal tip so uh, that, that is one of the limitations with the current irrigation devices but that's why we are using it just for the coronal and middle third and following this we are going to use passive irrigation for the middle and apical third we call this passive because here I'm not doing continuous activation I'm just doing passive syringe irrigation following which the canal and the pulp chamber is going to be filled with the canal with the irrigant and then now I'm going to use the activator in a passive mode so here I'm using sonics that is the yeah sonics which is my personal choice and you can still use any sonic device as well but remember when you use sonics you need to use it for a little extra time so now let us see what is new with irrigant activation devices uh, we haven't spoken about the negative pressure device we already have a separate video on negative pressure irrigation system uh, so I'm not going to talk about that in this video people want to know more about it it's a completely different mechanism you can go and watch one of our previous videos on that so now there's an Indian brand that has come up with a portable ultrasonic device this is similar to ultra X but what is new about this device is that they have come up with a polymer tip for for the ultrasonic device so this is the first polymer tip I can I, to my knowledge in the world which has been introduced by an Indian company and this is to be used in passive mode so uh, according to the manufacturer uh, the power of this device that they're providing along with those plastic tips is in fact more than the conventional uh, ultrasonic that we use it's almost like 42 kilohertz uh, that's what they claim and they have a polymer tip which is size 25 tip and these were the tips that were provided so I do not have any financial interest towards this product in fact I have bought this product out of curiosity just to test it because I've been waiting for a very long time for a plastic ultrasonic tip so that I can use it for my continuous irrigation but according to the manufacturer though this tip can fit in any woodpecker or EMS scaler he does not recommend it to be used along with the traditional scalers because according to him if you use it in the traditional scalers the tip is going to break uh, exactly like how ultra x and all these portable devices that have tips they do not recommend using in their in the conventional scaler instead they want you to use it only in their portable scaler so they give you four tips along with this device this device and the tips are together going to cost you 8500 rupees so uh, it can be used for passive ultrasonic irrigation so for if there are fans for ultrasonic irrigation and especially postgraduates who have been waiting for a plastic or a polymer tip ultrasonic tip for irrigant activation uh, here is one device that you need to look out for so this is the device that comes along with it and they give you four tips and after that each tip is 450 rupees Indian money and if you, you can buy it if you want more of them so they are autoclavable and according to the manufacturer they recommend to be used till it breaks so uh, this is the range that they give you along with it this tip can be just secured to this blunt attachment like this 
so this is the blunt tip that they give along with this device which is first secured to the handpiece and following that you can just press this tip just like a snap on tip and then it's good to go and they have three power modes and obviously it's always better to go with a higher power mode whenever possible according to me so this is the device in action and you can see i'm using this in a passive mode for even middle and apical third activation because the tip is polymer is able to go beyond the curve uh, now we need more studies now because all the previous studies had been uh, uh, telling that the metal tips may not be efficient beyond the curve but will these plastic tips plastic ultrasonic tips we know it's going to have more energy will this be more effective than the sonics and ultrasonics we need to wait and watch so this is just a comparison with the Yarsonic device which I am currently using. So as a clinician this is the comparison that I could do and like I mentioned maybe postgraduates and researchers can come forward to do more research on to find out how effective this new polymer ultrasonic tip is going to be in future clinical practice and for others who are planning to buy activators I think I've given you enough insights and you'll be free to choose one now and I can also help you by giving uh, the dealers contact of different activators in the description and see you all soon in our next video thank you for watching